I've been 3D printing parts from ASA Filament for a long time now. And I'll admit it, when I first started, I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, how stupid do you think I am? I don't know. I just met you. But in my case, I very much learn by failing, hence my entire YouTube channel, where I show through failure can often lead to success. I've made many parts out of ASA filament, like garage brackets, hooks, guides, parts for other 3D printers, rockets, and I've developed a near perfect method for 3D printing ASA filament. And no, it's not because I have any better slicer settings. Everything I use is open source and widely available. So if you want to print ASA or you're just having trouble, watch this video and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going over my method for 3D printing ASA filament. Before you even begin printing, you must have the right printer. And this includes a printer that is fully enclosed. I use the Quiddy X Smart 3 and then the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Both are fully enclosed to provide a heated chamber where heat is not so quickly lost to the surrounding air. A brass nozzle must be switched out to a hardened steel nozzle only if you begin to use a more abrasive material like ASA carbon fiber. Otherwise, you can print ASA with the brass nozzle. So here's my checklist that I'm going to go through. I do this every time I print ASA and it never really changes. The first thing I want to do is make sure that my print bed is clean. This is really the number one thing you want to do for any new print you're starting. You want to remove any finger oils or debris off the bed. I usually start with some hot soap and water, then I dry the bed and wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol. After you dry and clean the bed, you want to apply ASA bed adhesive to where the print will sit. Apply a single layer to the bed and put the bed back in your printer. Next, begin to heat your bed and the hot end. I begin to heat my bed to 110 degrees Celsius and the hot end to 285 degrees Celsius. I allow my temperatures to heat up and sit there for about 20 to 30 minutes. This preheating will allow everything to heat up nicely and the chamber air will also heat up. This goes to say don't open the door during this heating. Next up is to adjust your slicer for the ASA filament. In my example, I'm using Bamboo Lab slicer, but the approach is the same for all. You wanna turn off any cooling fans and make sure your temperatures are set correctly for the filament. In the Bamboo Lab slicer, you have three dots next to your filament. Click on these dots to expand the menu. Here you can set the bed plate temperature to be 110 degrees Celsius for the type of plate you are using. I have the textured PEI plate, so I make sure this is 110. Also, you have the nozzle temperature here at 285, and I set this for all of my layers. Go over to the cooling tab, and here you can turn off the cooling fan. You do this by unclicking the box that says keep fan always on. Also for safe measures, I also tell it no cooling for some large amount of layers like 500, just to double down on this idea that I don't want my cooling fan running. I also turn off cooling for bridges and overhangs, and I also set the fan speed to zero for my auxiliary cooling fan. All right, some additional comments I wanna leave you guys with. If you are experiencing some warping on your parts, like the edges or the corners, add a brim and make sure you have more than 10 lines. This will help hold down your corners or an edge that you're having difficulties with. Slow down the initial print speed of your part. And in general, slow down your printing speeds if you're having difficulties of the layer a heating to the surface.
I would go ahead and lower in increments of 10 millimeters per second each time until you can get a solid layer down. This is one of the larger prints I did with the Y dimension spanning across the entire width of the print bed and I had no issues. The part did not warp and came out really nice. Hopefully these tips help your prints come out smooth and ends any warping issues you have with ASA. Thank you all for watching this video. If you found it helpful, if you enjoyed the content, leave a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss a video. I hope your 3D printing turns out awesome and I'll see you all in the next video.